Good morning, everybody. Francis Schenewald speaking here, presenting a short uh, video on the social ontology of the Demos. Um, very much work in progress, I must say, prepared for this conference. It's the first shot at this topic I'm giving. Um, I basically rely on ordinary language uh, because I think uh, for political philosophy, we absolutely have to rely on ordinary language. It's people who use concepts who are the addressees of political obligations and they are the actors of uh, political processes. So everything that happens in politics happens within the realm of ordinary language and the entities that are constituted, the political entities <coughs> are grounded in language <coughs> and ultimately in ordinary language. So I start with the saying, uh, famous saying by Abraham Lincoln, democracy is the government of the people, by the people and for the people. And I'm interested in this social entity that is here invoked, political entity, the people. <clears throat> now, if we assume that the, the people denotes the same social entity or political entity in all three expressions here, <clears throat> uh, and if we assume that the people, uh, when they govern, are the highest lawmaking authority, that they are the sovereign authority of the land, then it follows that uh, we have two problems, namely the so-called uh, transitivity, pro transitivity problem or the paradox of popular sovereignty, namely that the sovereign and the subject seem to be identical. Um, and there is also a circularity problem concerning uh, the people, the demos as uh, the pouvoir constituant, donc, uh, the, the entity that actually puts uh, into place uh, the polity and its laws and rules and uh, the institutions, uh, the people as an institution that is constituted by uh, the constitution, uh, constitutional act. Um, so in this presentation, I aim at showing that uh, uh, I am showing basically what kind of political entity is denoted by the people in democracy as government by the people. <clears throat> um, what is that? And this, uh, this entity I call henceforth the demos. <clears throat> and what I'd like to show in this, or what I hope is becoming evident in this paper is, in this presentation, is that uh, the governing people, the demos, uh, is ontologically non-identical with the subjects of government or so to speak, the population um, and uh, the addressees for whom government is, is for uh, in a utilitarian sense, but also who are the addressees of the political obligations that uh, the governing body, the people, um, creates, so to speak. <clears throat> so besides offering a better understanding of what, of what the demos is, I hope to do that. I, I show... Uh, um, uh, that the transitivity problem or the the popular sovereignty paradox, as it's also sometimes called, can can be solved. And I will not address the demos problem, although I think it could be solved uh, along uh, the same lines uh, with an ontological analysis. <coughs> uh, but I'm not going into this in this presentation, and I'm not going to into further detail. Uh, regarding the question what the population is or the subjects uh, of government as opposed to the people, the demos, as the uh, governing subject. <laughs> um, so to maybe start on the same page conceptually, um, I would propose a working definition uh, of the demos in democracy as government by the people. <laughs> Um, the demos is, is a group of citizens permanently vested with the highest governmental authority, which I take it is a deontic power and not simply a physical force within a territory. And here you see a nice picture of a demos. I think, you know, this is, there's no mystery here. The, the demos is not a mysterious uh, kind of uh, thing that has absolutely no uh, anchorage in, in, in any physical reality. So here we can we can point to, to a demos. What you see is the the assembly of the people uh, at the Landsgemeinde of Glarus in Switzerland. But of course, what I'm going to say I think is not only true for for demoi who actually assemble uh, on a square <coughs> of a town, but for 
the, the Moi who only act via institutions such as elections, etc. <clears throat> we'll come back to this uh, picture later on to illustrate some points I'm making. So uh, again, here I'm not being uh, original at all. I, I take the, the ontology of, of, of the demos, the political ontology of the demos to be something that is ultimately grounded in, in, in Searle's uh, theory that can be traced back as we know much further, <laughs> all the way maybe to Reinach. And others. Uh, so X counts as Y and C is the status functions, which we can apply, as we know, to coins of Swiss francs. Uh, they count as money in Switzerland. <laughs> and apply to our subject matter, we could start out by saying the demos counts as the highest lawmaking authority in a democratic country. <laughs> and this can bottom out. Uh, in citizens, uh, citizens uh, count as the demos in a, in a democratic uh, country. Now the problem is um, that the second formula that I just mentioned does not give us an account uh, of the demos <clears throat> because unlike five franc coins, citizens individually in groups or even collectively do not count as the demos by virtue of counting as citizens. Um, and that's very different with money. So the, the five franc piece coin counts as money by virtue of counting as a five franc coin. Um, but the citizens uh, or the individuals who count as citizens who have that status, they sleep in bed, gather informally, gather to protest even. Um, they are citizens, but they are not the demos. Uh, their acts are not acts that yield the deontic powers of, of the demos. Just imagine this picture uh, on the following day, even if on the following day, the exactly same human individuals who count as citizens gather on this town square informally stroll around. They might even discuss politics but they will not be the demos. They are the demos here because uh, of something more than just uh, their simple status functions uh, as citizens or whatever they do um, as uh, citizens. So <clears throat> as this picture illustrates, of course, I think we could say there can be no demos without physical human individuals who count as citizens in a polity that's granted. So we can say uh, that, of course, uh, it's part of, of the constitution, the ontological constitution of the demos, of the demos. It is part of that we have constitutive rules creating citizen status and uh, attributing the antic powers uh, to such people who then have that citizen status. And we need constitutive rules that, that grant individual citizens uh, individual human beings this status and identify them uh, as, as citizens and thereby establish the institutional fact that uh, X counts as a citizen in Z, um, as we know um, from, from Searle. <clears throat> but we cannot stop there. This is not a sufficient account uh, of what the demos is. Um, fr from the citizens as a group, <clears throat> to the demos as the highest governing political entity, we get uh, by two more things, or broadly recognized constitutive rules setting up an ensemble of governmental decision-making procedures and specifying them, and uh, rules conferring deontic powers to the citizens of the polity provided or when and only when they act within these specified governmental decision-making procedures. <clears throat> uh, so uh, going back to our image, it's only the citizens who assemble according to the rules, when this is supposed to be done, where it is supposed to be done, and according to what procedures they then act enact their decisions that these citizens are the demos and they are thereby not only distinguished from these tourists here democracy tourists who are watching the spectacle 
they're also distinguished from themselves uh, in other situations as being part of other procedures at other times. <clears throat> um, and it seems to me that this is the essential difference, or that's the, the essential step to, to the constitution of the political entity um, of, of the demos. <clears throat> and um, as we know, these obligations and laws, and even the demos itself, it needs to be a continuant. But we could say that the actions of the citizens as members of the demos are occurrence. Huh? The, <clears throat> the, the Landsgemeinde is an occurrence, uh, as you see on the picture. It has a time in uh, place in time and space. <clears throat> um, but the demos is an enduring uh, deontic structure, or it, it, is, it establishes enduring deontic uh, relations. <clears throat> And the subjects uh, of the demos are under an obligation to obey the laws and dispositions within a certain domain, even when the procedure of making and proclaiming the laws, of course, is over. And so um, I think we should be reminded of what Barry Smith has, uh, has reminded us of against, against Searles, that, that um, there is something non-physical and also non-psychological about uh, the reality um, when these kind of deontic issues are uh, implied. So there's something about the structure of an obligation, of a commitment, of a progress, of a promise <coughs> that is um, is not identifiable with any kind of physical thing, and not identifiable with any kind of psychological state. Um, <coughs> so these Dantic powers of the demos are not directly and only anchored in the citizens as physical human individuals, <clears throat> but there is an anchorage, of course, in the realm of records and representations of uh, commitments to governmental decision-making procedures or to the constitutive rules, um, which establish these institutional facts of, of status functions and of of procedures, <clears throat> which then citizens uh, make, within which citizens take decisions uh, and citizens then enact. Uh, so the commitment itself, again, is, is, is not the physical document, but it is permanently documented in a set of documents or in a singular document, but, but it has some anchorage um, in written language, uh, in, 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 in this sense, um, although this is not entirely necessary, one could probably imagine a completely oral tradition of a demos where <clears throat> some basic constituted rules of decision-making procedures are, uh, are just uh, in, in the collective or in the, in the collective memory um, of people, <clears throat> but um, these utterances and commitments, um, they can be recorded and represented um, in writing and uh, the stability uh, of a demos um, can be clearly enhanced by, by, writ by written uh, documentation and, and uh, written, written law. <clears throat> Although this might not be a necessary element uh, here, it's just, it's just a reflection on how uh, the demos is stabilized uh, over time. <clears throat> um, and what is certainly important is that uh, these, uh, although the commitments come into being by utterances, uh, but that what the commitment is and that what an obligation is, <laughs> is not itself a product of fantasy. And though, so I, I would say, the demos itself, based on this uh, uh, reflection or on this theory by, by Barry Smith, the, the demos is not a ma massive fantasy in this sense, uh, nor is it completely reducible to, to the physical or psychological world. <clears throat> so uh, we could say it's, an, it's a quasi-abstract entity with, with Smith, established by utterances and documentation of commitments that are, I think, reenacted over time, reaffirmed over time, <clears throat> either orally or in writing, 
Um, and and this, these commitments are to constitutive rules that establish status functions and uh, governmental authoritative uh, decision-making um, procedures. <laughs> Um, and so I think it's quite clear that the demos as a political entity is distinct from the population. The population which is the addressee or which is the subjects uh, of political obligations. Because every single human individual, by virtue of being a human ind individual within the realm of the demos, is subjected to, to the law uh, of the land. <coughs> uh, and so there's certainly... Uh, an ontological distinction to be made between the mass of these or the or the the group of these subjects and the demos uh, which is only the demos uh, on the basis of um, constitutive rules that gives uh, citizen status and prescribes when um, a certain actions of these citizens are authoritative actions of the demos, namely only when they act within, and here you see the picture again, certain specified procedural rules. It need not be a physical assembly of the people on the town square. It could be an election. It can be um, anything that we know from representative uh, democracy. The point is, <laughs> outside of these procedures, it is not the demos that is enacted or exists, or it is not the demos that acts, although people might claim so. You might uh, have protesters waving uh, banners saying, we are the people, <clears> that <throat> they make representative claims, and that is of course legitimate and important in democracy, but it's not, uh, that act is not an authoritative act uh, of, of the demos. It is only uh, recognized if it is, if it happens within, uh, a, uh, <clears throat> a system or a set of constitutive rules that establish these authoritative decision-making procedures within, then, within which citizens um, then act. Thank you very much. That's uh, all for today.